All right, guys. So I'm here. My name is Danielle. Um, I'm actually just sitting in my bedroom. Don't mind if my bed is dirty because it is dirty <laughs> because I have an animal who sleeps on my bed who is dirty right now. So it's white and it's kind of stained and like kind of dirty. But I don't have anywhere in the house right now to do this video because the kids are home. They're freaking loud. My beauty space is a mess and if you hear the air conditioning, I'm sorry for that as well. Um, I do have my my tea. I suggest you guys get yourself something to drink as well because this is going to be kind of a long video. Um, I have been really hesitant to do this video. Um, the reason why is because it's very near and dear to my heart. Um, yeah, it's very personal and I'm very opening up and I know I look dingy and I know but it's like I just got out of Jurassic Park and I cried a few times I'm not gonna lie but I did get out of Jurassic Park and it's like a hundred and something degrees out here and it's 430 so it's late and I'm not gonna get dressed up to do this video and you'll know the reason why um, don't feel like it's very appropriate to get all nice and pretty for this video although I did get nice and pretty for the funeral I don't know anyway okay so today I'm going to be talking about life um, I'm going to be talking about my life I'm going to be talking about my son's death and what surrounded his death and events that led up to it and events that was after and during and all that kind of stuff if this kind of a video is really hard for you to listen to then you may not want to watch it but I strongly encourage you to watch it because this is a big part of me and I just feel like it's reality and you never know what can happen in life and I just want you to be able to kind of get a little bit of insight into my heart and my soul and I would love to share the story about my son to you as hard as it is and as scary as it is because I'm putting myself out there so anyway I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the video and um, yeah let's do this okay so I don't really know where to begin I guess where I want to begin is uh, my husband's name is JD I met him in the year in 98 at, at a high school um, he was the one man can you stop looking at me he was a one man in my life that, this is going to be kind of probably a series because it's, it's going to be containing a lot. <laughs> he was a one man in my life where, which I had a lot of them, I'm not going to lie, um, I felt connected to. I always knew from the very beginning that I um, was going to have kids with this man. Um, it was a very strong feeling that I had. Um, anyway, so... Um, I also knew another thing, well, I felt another thing very strongly, which was that I was going to have three boys. Um, so I knew I was going to have children with this man. I knew that I was going to have three boys. Um, these are just feelings that I had before I was even married to JD, before I was even um, at the point of marriage with JD. Um, I just had these feelings. And so... With JD, I, I stuck with my gut with him, which means that I, even though there was hardship for the both of us, I knew that I needed to stick with this man. Um, I just knew it. And I'm um, very blessed and happy that I did. Uh, another thing that I felt very strongly about, which it didn't end up turning into what I thought it was going to be, but I felt like 25 was going to be a really big year for me. Now, my family is part of a very big um their business they, they have a lot of money okay and I thought maybe since that was the case that maybe at 25 I was going to come into money I just I didn't know what it was I just knew that something big was going to happen in my life I just was naive and thought oh well maybe that's what it is if it's something big then maybe that's what it is I didn't any clue of what was going to happen. Anyway, me and my husband uh, found out I was pregnant. He actually, um, I found out I was pregnant after he had um, engaged to me. So, 
that's that. So he engaged to me, and then I found out I was pregnant with Caden. Well, with Caden, I was so happy. I mean, I had to quit doing a lot of things. I got pregnant with Caden, I had Caden, and I was so in love with Caden. I didn't suffer from any sort of anxiety, any sort of depression, or you know, like um, baby blues. I mean, me and Caden were the world. Um, and then I was, anyways, skip to, I wanted to have another baby. So then I got pregnant with James and James was my second child. And let's just put this out there. I had never been pregnant at all before, at all. Like no abortions, no miscarriages, no, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant, nothing. Like Caden was the first one, then it was James and, um, and uh yeah so james was born um okay i need to go back to caden really quick caden came out and it took me four months to get him to nurse i was pumping i was supplementing i was going to lactation consultants i was weighing him in between nursing he would not latch he was wearing a nipple shield and if you guys want to hear more about that story just let me know in the comments below and i'll go deeper into that i just want you to know that it took me four months of that carrying a huge pump because they didn't have the little pumps then they had the huge hospital pumps around until he would nurse so it's not like it was easy but I was determined and I got him to nurse after being that I mean I went through fat sores on my nipples I mean I went through it all pretty much with Caden and um, eventually after sticking through it he nursed and I nursed him for 16 months I actually nursed him up until I found out I was pregnant with James and then um, I started to wean him. I think I probably nursed Caden about four months into um, nursing or till I found out I was pregnant with James. So there's that. So I didn't end up getting a period, I think, until after a year, um, even while I was nursing Caden because he was just nursing here and there at that time, you know. So it was, so I, my body ended up having a period again. So I was able to get pregnant with James. Okay, so um, James was born. And he did not come out nursing. Um, he was three weeks early. Caden was two weeks early. And James was three weeks. I had, had to have an emergency C-section with Caden. I went through all of labor and then had a C-section. This kind of will tie into my health issues as well. But I'm not going to go there today. We're just talking about James today. Um, anyway, so I um, had James. And he was a very sleepy baby. He was a very... Um, he cried a lot, a very lot. Um, I was definitely overwhelmed with James because of that, but I still was like a loving mother. You know, I loved James. Um, Caden slept with us all the way up until he was a year old and still like he didn't never had a crib. He slept with us. I believed in that. He moved into a, a twin bed you know, at, and I still had to sleep with him until he went to bed. But we were very connected, very bonded. And um, that's just the way I am with my children. James came out and he was different. He didn't want to sleep with me. Um, he felt more comfortable sleeping alone. Um, I tried as much as I did with Caden to nurse him. I already had lactation set up. I already had all this ready by the time James had come out. And so I was weighing him and it, I mean, I was, I was feeding him in between, I would take him to the lactation consultant place. I would weigh him. I'd feed him. It's, I would be like, oh my gosh, he just ate so much because it sounded like he, I mean, he would go for like half an hour and just gulp, 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 gulp. And then I'd weigh him and I mean, like he got two drops and it wasn't me. I was producing enough milk. So there was something going on to where for some reason, I don't know the reason, all I know it was a blessing, um, he would not nurse. I mean, he nursed, but he was not getting anything and he was suffering because of it. And so, I didn't think I'd cry, sorry. After six weeks of nursing him, I had made the decision to, sorry. I'd made the decision to quit nursing him. And uh, that was a really hard decision for me, really hard. Although once I had done it, once I had saw that he was thriving, once I had saw that he wasn't angry anymore, he wasn't frustrated anymore, he started becoming a happier baby, I was felt relieved with it, I felt at ease with it. 
Um, but it was definitely a hard decision, you know, because I was a nurser, you know. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't like, you have to nurse. I just personally, that's what I like to do. And, you know, with James, um, we had bonded. But with Caden, I had felt him in the future. I had seen, I had visualized his future. With James, I had a really hard time visualizing his future. Um, you know, it was strange. Um, it was like a block. You know, every time that I would think about him in the future, it was a block. And So, you know, I, ha I had struggled with James. Um, not with my, it was weird because I didn't know why, you know, I didn't know why I was struggling. I just had this overwhelming feeling of doom with um, James and I didn't know why. Um, all I know is during that time I was really had a lot of anxiety, like a lot of anxiety. I just didn't feel right. Um, I was drinking a lot because of it and um, I didn't know what to do with myself. I went, had been messing around with antidepressants because I had been having these feelings and I didn't know what to do with them. Um, it was just really strange. I've been feeling very connected to him and bonded to him, but there was something different about James. It was not, there was something about him, you know? And he was four months and 17 days when he passed away. And that day, um, all I know is the night before he passed, we were having like a fun time as a family. And I remember taking him into the room to rock him. And I was rocking him. And I was literally saying to him, if something ever happens to you, I will always love you. And I was kind of like, I don't know, I just, I had never done that before, you know, just something inside me was like saying goodbye, kind of, you know. Anyway. So it was like I was saying goodbye to him without me really even knowing, you know. I didn't know that it was going to happen. I definitely had a lot of feelings that it was going to happen, but I wasn't like, you know, I did I don't know. It's kind of weird to explain. I was like, weird. So I ended up, he wouldn't go to sleep that night. He wouldn't go to sleep. So I ended up taking him back out to the living room, and we just sat out there, and I just stared into his eyes for like, the longest time you know we were just really connected at that moment it, the whole time like but we were just that and it was just so special to me I mean it was just really strange you know I was just so at peace just sitting there looking at him he was just watching his brother play he was just being so quiet and just taking everything in it was just so strange so weird anyway so it was just so beautiful you know the next day um we just had a normal day i decided i wanted to feed him his very first time um rice cereal so we fed him rice cereal and he was like so happy with himself we have so many pictures of it he had, he was like smiling from ear to ear like he was so happy with himself and so we were like so happy about that you know then it was like time Caden I had just put Caden to bed around like I think it was like eight o'clock or something like that and James stayed up for a little bit and um no I'm sorry I put James to bed first James at this moment was sleeping in the room with Caden because James didn't want to sleep with me he only wanted to sleep alone and he always had this let me get it hold on James always slept with this right here. It was a little blanky. And there were many times, I mean, he loved this. He wouldn't sleep without it. And there were many times that I would find him with it just kind of like on his face, you know? 
and uh, which is not it's not heavy or anything so he very easily could take it off of his face but he loved this thing loved it and so I put him to bed and I had Caden up and I was vacuuming or whatever and I went to go put Caden to bed an hour later and god I didn't think I'd get so emotional it's really this is a very special thing that I'm telling you guys this but I thought maybe I could help other people who had lost children or even lost kids to SIDS feel some sort of, I don't know. I felt content hearing this type of stuff and I don't know. Anyway, so I walked into the bedroom with Kaden and I instantly felt like something was wrong and I looked over at James and I saw that he was just laying on his back with this over his face and I mean for some reason this one time I just felt like something was wrong I don't know why I don't know why but it did and so I instantly flipped the light on and I saw him there and I saw like black throw up everywhere spit up death throw up whatever you want to call it and I picked him up and he was very limp and but still warm and so I started freaking out I literally like started doing CPR on him while I was holding him I was freaking out we could not find the phone at that time and um, we were searching everywhere for it and JD finally got the police station on the phone and we had him in the middle of our living room on the ground and I had Caden in my arms at this time just plastered against the wall just holding him and uh, Caden kept saying I'm sorry mommy I'm sorry mommy like so quiet and I have to go back to when I found him because this is such a key moment when I found him like that the first thing that went through my mind when I picked him up is is this really happening is this really happening because I just felt this just felt this and it was like deja vu because I had been feeling so strange and so weird like something was wrong that I just could not believe that it was happening to me at that time I just was in shock obviously so JD just continued to start working with him and at some point when the fire department was talking to him I had like a sense of hope but yeah it didn't last very long the ambulance got there and I went in the ambulance with James and I remember them being frustrated that first of all he was naked strapped in the back with tons of people working on him and I remember just praying to God and it didn't pray for God to save him I just said whatever is right I just kept praying over and over again whatever the right thing is you know that it's the right thing and no, that's just what came to my mind and um, I think it's because I knew that he wasn't gonna make it so I was just kind of at his mercy you know and um, anyway I also remember um, people not moving out of the way it was a long drive it was all the way people are familiar um, with Rancho Cordova it was all the way we had to go all the way to UC Davis so it was a really long drive and we got there and all I remember is getting there being in the room with them working on him and him on the bed with like wires everywhere you know and my family at this point had all gotten there and uh they were all like in there, the room with us while they were being worked on. My mom had just gotten back from somewhere and she had made it there as well. And I just felt the love. 
you know, JD had gotten there, and, um, Pat had, his stepmom had stayed behind with Caden at the house, and when everybody was there, they pronounced that she was dead, and I don't remember what time. I pretty much fell to the floor, <laughs> literally fell on the floor, and, um, and I was just defeated in shock, and I got to hold him for one last time, and I rocked him, and I sang to him, and I sang, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And that is why, uh, to this day, stars represent my son, is because that is what I decided to do in that moment in time, is sing Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star to him. Um, after that, he started to get cold, and I didn't like it, so I passed him on. And all I remember is just having to go and answer a lot of questions, um, at the time, the police, obviously they have to do an investigation, and that's kind of what they did. Um, my mom, when we got back to the house that night, it was really early in the morning, uh, obviously our first inclination, if that's even a word, um, is to wash his sheets because it's devastating to see all the black stuff on his sheets. <laughs> so my mom washed his sheets and they weren't very happy with that. Um, they did a full investigation of us, obviously, which was like traumatic in itself, but you know, I was fine with it because I was, I knew that I didn't do anything wrong, you know. I thought maybe I fed him something, or you know, I thought maybe it was a rice cereal that I fed him. I was in shock, you guys. I have never felt, I fe literally felt like I got into the worst car accident my body was sore um I, I was in so much shock like I was just I don't know I was just so in shock and um obviously family was there we had been cleared or whatever and family was there um for days after that and um anyway I'm still talking about the day after I was very in shock, like I would just be sitting there and talking, you know, and then I would just bust out crying saying, why, why did this happen, you know, why, why, why did this happen, like, is it real, you know, and then I would be fine again and comforting other people and then I would just bust out crying and it was like, a roller coaster ride. I didn't eat. Um, I know that at this time my mom was, you know, wanting to help as much as she could. We had put away all of his bottles and everything, and um, I had not gone through anything. My parents and his family had made all the arrangements. They had went. They had picked out a spot. I mean, we got to ultimately pick out the spot, but they had done everything everything they did everything for us which was such a huge blessing because we were already so badly grieving you know like it was just we didn't have to deal with that which is so such a huge blessing and family was around us for a good amount of time um i remember it was the not that night that the first night but the second night um me and JD and Caden were laying in bed. Caden and JD were sleeping. I always like to light candles. I lit candles like all the time, like always. And um, every night. And I remember I was laying in bed. I was scared for JD to go to sleep. I was like, oh, don't go to sleep. I'm so scared. Please don't go to sleep, you know? And he ended up falling asleep and I was up alone. <laughs> And I was so sad and I was so confused and um, I just remember thinking god I can't light candles how could I do that how could I be happy how could I light candles 
And I was like, Daniel, just do it. Just light candles. And I had like this like thing that hung from the corner of my um, room. It was like this thing from Pier 1 and I, I lit it and I went and laid back down in bed and and literally I just started praying and all I know like is like in my head you know I just went down this path like I feel like it was God I had never I had always been raised in a Christian house but I never had truly believed in God and um I never felt God and that night I felt God and the way I felt God was he took me down a path in my brain in my literally in my conscience of what it would be like if I was depressed if I chose to be negative if I chose to not learn what I could from this about myself and it was so dark it was so dark it was just like so painful and I just felt so like sick you know and I just felt like there's no way I just felt so like like I could get into some serious trouble I could possibly lose my other child and it was dark and he took me down a place of if I chose to do what I could to be positive if if I chose to just love you know be okay and love again and just continue down the positive path that I was already going on because I was so being I was already being so positive and um, and I chose to do that. Um, this is going to be probably too much information, but when Caden, it was the night after that little experience that I had, that Caden was in his own room and me and JD were alone, and we had decided to make ourselves make love together, and um, it was definitely a decision that we felt like was very important because obviously we didn't feel like it you know I mean obviously we were just so upset and tortured and so it was a definitely a decision that we felt like we needed to connect you know we needed to do it not because of sex because of connection we needed to feel connected to each other and so we did and um Anyway, so we did. I'm gonna take a drink real quick. And anyway, so we just decided to do that, and so we did. And um, anyway, weeks went on where we had everything, you know, we did everything, and I started to really see the blessings. Not, I'm not saying that, how do I put this? I'm not saying I wish my son was here you know I don't but I feel like when things like this happen to you you start to notice the blessings you know it could have been so much worse there are people that are out there that their kids get murdered their kids are sick they're you know they're James I don't even know if I told you this he died from sudden infant death syndrome um, and it was in his autopsy some autopsies come back as inclusive and the parents are left to wonder what the hell happened his came back definitely as SIDS um, I found out I was pregnant with Jesse um, two weeks after James passed away and I was just like so happy I knew that it would never replace James but I feel like it was the best blessing and think about it guys why how how could I have gotten pregnant if I was nursing James he was only four months I wouldn't have had a period you know I would my boobs would have been aching for James on top of my soul and my heart aching for James I would have been aching for him I, I feel so blessed that James did not want to sleep with me I feel so blessed that he did not want to nurse it's like 
the best blessing he could have given me, you know? Like, I can't even tell you, like, what a huge blessing that was that he gave me. He gave that to me. He also gave me God, you know? And I'm not the type of person that feels like you have to go to church to be a Christian. I am a very spiritual person. I don't necessarily follow everything out of the Bible. I believe that it's a very personal thing, and that is how I believe. I, my relationship with God is my relationship with God. I also believe in energy, you know. I, I don't necessarily, I don't know, like I don't go to church, and I don't feel like I have to go to church to have a relationship with God. I went to church my whole life, and what gave me a relationship to God is my son, you know, and so that's that. Like, I don't, I just feel like it's a personal thing to have a relationship, and that's how I feel. Because James did not nurse, I was got pregnant with my third boy. Oh, by the way, when James passed away, I was 25 years old. <sighs> I just try to, like, breathe. Remember that time where I said something really big was going to happen in my life? That was James passing away for me. That was the big, man, I wish it was money, but it wasn't, so it was James. Anyway, I got pregnant with my third boy, and, um, and I didn't know what he was at first. I just knew that I'm so grateful that I was able to get pregnant because I, what, I grieved crazy. I grieved right. I couldn't drink. I couldn't smoke. I couldn't smoke weed. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't take my Xanax. I couldn't do anything because I'm very dedicated to my children. And that enabled me to grieve properly. I let myself go through all the emotions that I needed to go through. And I feel very blessed about that. Um, I let myself cry if I needed to. I screamed. I went outside and screamed my head off. I didn't care, you know, I, honestly, I didn't care about a lot. I just knew that I cared about my child, my husband, and I cared about being healthy, and that's all I cared about. I cared about grieving right, I cared about just getting my life back on track, and I cared about listening to what God told me that night, which was to stay as positive as I could be, and that's what I did. I did that, and I found out I was having a boy, and I was so happy. But at the same time, I felt so weird. Like, I just know that, I don't know if everybody has this. My intuition, you guys, is so strong. It is very strong. And everything that I have intuition about always ends up being right, unfortunately. It's mind-blowing. And... I'm going to skip to after Jesse was born and I ended up having major health issues. I'm not going to go into my health issues. This video is already really long. I kind of want to make this a series. But there's one thing that I want to point out as well, which is um, I wanted to have another child after Jesse too. I wanted to have another child. I wanted to have three children here. I knew I was probably supposed to have three children, but I wanted to have three children here. You know, I felt empty. I knew that it wouldn't um, take, you know, fill that hole, but I still wanted to have more. I wanted a bigger family. And um, I didn't know if it meant I was supposed to have three children, three boys here, or if three boys, but one of them's not here anymore. You know, and um, I had major health issues. I still to do to this day, which if anybody watches my vlogs or videos, you know. But I didn't want that to stop me. I still tried so hard to get pregnant with a lots of failed pregnant, not failed pregnancies, but with lots of like chemical pregnancies, and it just didn't happen, you guys. And after I think about two years ago is when I literally. Came to the realization that what God meant by you're having three boys is you're having three boys. There's no other kids. You need to get over it. And he told me that 
by making me understand that my health issues, that there is no way you can have another child and still care for the children that you have. And it took a while for my brain to catch up with that because as anybody knows, when you have biological clock ticking, it ticks, it's real hard, it's real strong. And um, that day that I realized that I wasn't going to be able to have any more kids, I, which I'll go into the whole journey of that on a later date, but um, I literally, and I want to go through this day again as well, but right now I'm just going to kind of sum it up. I literally fell to the floor that day, and, um, and I will tell you why in a later video as well, but the reaction was I fell to the floor and I sobbed my eyes out. I sobbed so hard that there was snot all over my face, all in my hair. I had to call my husband because I could not, I could, I couldn't even talk on the phone. He got so worried that he came here, found me sobbing still when he got home, which is like a 30 minute drive. I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. It was very hard. But my brain finally caught up to the fact that what that meant that I was supposed to have three children, three boys. You have three boys, Danielle. This is your path. This is what you are supposed to have. You need to embrace it and be content with it and understand that you're lucky. You're lucky to have two beautiful boys here and you're lucky with what James gave you, which is a relationship, my very own relationship with God and my intuition. And what that means is I learn to trust myself because everything that I have learned or have thought, have had feelings, have had premonitions, whatever you want to call them, intuition, I have been right every time and I still sometimes doubt my intuition but I'm right usually I mean it's crazy I am not saying I'm psychic or anything like that I believe that as people as humans as women we have intuition in our bodies we have feelings and I learned with James and through this whole period of time to trust those feelings and I'm not perfect but I have just learned that I really need to trust those feelings that is like the best gift along with God that anybody could ever give me so it has been 10 years now that James has been passed away and uh in, I have my younger, older son, Cain and Joseph, and then my second son, James Robert, and my third son, Jesse James. And I feel blessed. Um, I have, to this day, never not acknowledged my son. If I get asked all the time how many children you have, I say I have three. If they're strangers sometimes they go deeper into it and I say I have they ask me the ages I say they're between 12 and they're between 12 and 9 if they go further that is when I have to say my second son's in heaven there are times where I just come out and say it but I never not acknowledge my son because I truly feel that even though he's not here with us on this earth he is still my son. He always will be. I carried him in my stomach. I cared for him for four months. He gave me the best gifts that anybody could ever give me. I've changed. I've changed since my son. I have, I'm a different person because of my son. And it's something that it is like he was here and he gave me the best gift you know 
in his short period of time and um, I still to this day grieve him um, but we do things like we have done this ever since he was well the first thing that we've done ever since he was born or passed away which he passed away on April 24th he was born on he was born on December 7th which is two days after my birthday and he passed away on April 24th which was April 24th and um, upon his birthday we always go to the cemetery um, and we bring something Christmassy out there because it's around Christmas time we bring balloons out there usually my mom or my stepdad will meet me out there sometimes they my dad doesn't sometimes he does my mom, my mom is usually always there and we write on them and we all let them go together for his birthday that is something that we've always done for the first few years on his death day it was just me and JD that did things and we didn't really do anything but wallow in our grief um, then I decided about I'd say I think the third year maybe the fourth year I think the fourth year I decided you know what I want to take the kids out of school I want you to JD, JD always took that day off but I want to get together every single year on that day and I want to go on a trip day trip if we have to I don't care so usually we've been to Tahoe twice we've been to hiking in San Francisco we've we've just do things like that and the reason why I do that is so we can me and JD can build new memories on that day so every year it doesn't because I remember everything leading up to that day what it was like around that time and after everything vividly how the weather was how it smelt everything so I would like to make new memories so then as the years go on I start to remember new things versus that tragic day of when he passed away. Um, I will never forget it, but I would just like to replace those memories, the tragic, the tragic memories. I will never replace them fully, but you know what I mean. It has really helped me um, to just get together and just rejoice James on that day with my family, with my kids, and with my husband, and that's what we do on that day. I don't really know what else to say at this time. I know that I have a lot more um, to talk about after Jesse, you know, my health stuff and everything like that, but I don't want to talk about it today. I want you to know that this video was very hesitated of me doing because it's very personal, but I am trying to open myself up to you guys completely, 100% fully, um, and in doing that, I really feel like it's important that my friends out there know what happened. I mean, some of my family doesn't even know exactly what happened, so I feel like it's really important for me to tell my story about that. I'm not sure if I missed out anything, but I feel like I got some pretty good key points in there. Um, and I feel like your child doesn't have to die to listen to your intuition. And that goes for women and for children and for men. I feel like we have these intuitions in us and a lot of people decide to ignore them. And I think it's very important to listen to that intuition. Um, I think it's very crazy that I ended up marrying J JD, which I knew, which if you guys only knew the troubles that we went through to get there, you would know there was a very chance that it would not be possible, but I knew to stick with him. And the fact that I have three beautiful boys from this man when I knew I would have three beautiful boys is amazing. The fact that something so tragic happened when I knew that 25 was gonna be a big year is amazing that I knew that. And the fact that James gave me the gift of knowing that something was gonna happen, that I was able to say goodbye to my child before he even died was beautiful and I know not everybody out there has that same opportunity and I want you to know that I do feel blessed in my my the way my child passed away he passed away pe peacefully and in his sleep and um, and I know not everybody gets that 
same experience. I know that there are a lot of people out there who have to suffer a lot more. And I feel for you guys, like so much, because I know how blessed I am to have had my child pass away in his sleep. And I know that there are many people out there who don't get that, who have to live with so much pain of wondering if their child suffered. And I just want you to know that I do feel lucky and I know how hard it must be for you because of how lucky I feel that, that did not happen to me. And I know the grief alone, what it does to you. I could not even imagine having to wonder those things. Um, another thing that I think that I was very blessed, me and my husband, is um, I think the divorce rate for losing a child is like 80%. And me and JD have definitely had our hard times, but we have stuck together. And I think a lot of that is due that we were both there that night. Um, there was no blaming to be done. We were both there. You know, if he would have been gone and I was just there, there's I could have blamed him. Or if, if, if opposite, I you know, he could have blamed me. The fact that we were both there is such a huge blessing. And I feel for you guys out there who have lost a child where you feel like it's the other person's fault. And I'm not in your position, but if you are going through the same thing right now and you still are with your spouse, and you know it's not their fault, but you just, for some reason, need something to blame. Try not to blame them because it's not their fault. You know, things like this happen and it's out of our control most of the time. I'm not talking for every experience, but most of the time, these things are not in our control. That is enough. I'm so glad I'm talking about this because before James passed away, I was in control of my life. I was. Even though I had these feelings and all that, I was in control of my life. I had everything planned out and um, that's why I think that when I was getting those feelings it was very strange and foreign to me and I learned after James passed away, I am not in control of my life. I have no control. Yes, I can have plans and I can try to go by those plans, but in the end, it is not me in control. If something is going to happen, it's going to happen. You can try to stop it as much as you want to stop it, you know. And I don't say don't stop it because, of course, like if your child's, you know, getting into trouble or something, yes, stop it. But it ultimately, you're not in control of your life. And sometimes you have to let go of that control. And I've really let go of the control because, honestly, it just nothing has gone the way that I've expected. I'm now chronically ill and uh, I was never planning to be that way. I never was that way before and um, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go because this video is already too long. I'm going to continue these types of things um, talking about, you know, my health and parenting and things like that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys out there understand that I know every situation is very unique. I am telling you my situation today. This is a very unique situation to me. I am by no means trying to, I don't know, like I just, I, my goal of telling you guys this is for you to know more about me and my family and for you, if somebody is watching out there who, you know, has had a child pass away to find comfort in my story because I know when I found so much comfort in being around people who had also lost a child and then also knew what I was going through, you know? And I want you to know that no matter how our children die, our children die and we all feel the same as far as grieving. I mean, they all happen differently and there's levels of anger and resentment that might be a little bit different and everybody reacts differently as well but we all miss and long for our children and I remember waking up in the morning panicking because I thought that he was alive and then I realized quickly that he was not no longer alive every morning 
for like a month that happened to me and I'd be afraid to go to sleep because I did not want that to happen because I had to live it every day over and over and over again it was hard it was one of the, it was the hardest thing in my whole entire life that I could have ever been through and I've been through a lot and still I'm going through a lot and the, and I would take chronic illness if I could have my son back any day any day anyway um, I hope nobody gets offended by my um, talk because I'm not meaning to offend anybody I'm just trying to get, let you guys into my life a little bit and um, I hope that I could have helped somebody out there please feel free to send me a message I'm here for you and I have no problem talking with you but it make you like cry too much but just want you guys to know that thank you for everybody who you know watched this video I know it wasn't an easy one and I want you to know that I appreciate it deeply and I love all my subscribers my friends out there who are supporting me and um, I really appreciate you guys and I just feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing and uh, I'm just happy I'm doing it because I feel like I could touch lives and that's what I want I want to help and I want to touch lives and uh, yeah in whatever way I can um, I'm gonna close this video out but I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later